going on guys c lemons back again with the military hacks so is it about time for you to go to maps that you don't know exactly what to expect so how exactly are you feeling about the process are you nervous anxious scared concerned do you want more insight into how to pass the process and how to ensure that you're good to go so what if i told you that if you give me just a minute of your time that i could quiet some of the concerns that you may have and give you the blueprint to passing the entire process how would that make you feel what if i also told you that your fingers had magical like button abilities and that if you hit that like button that you could affect the youtube algorithm so before you even step foot within the military entry point or melts these are some of the things that you're gonna need in order to qualify. So you're gonna need a social security card. You're gonna need a high school diploma or a GED. You will need a government or state issue ID. You will also need to be a US citizen or permanent resident. You can't have any outstanding criminal history and even with minor charges, you may require a waiver, but you will be good to go if it's something minor. But more than likely, if you have no criminal history, then you'll be good. And you must be within the height and weight standards as delineated by the guidebook. And let's not forget about one of the most important things, that ASVAB score. As of now, the ASVAB for the Navy is a 26. So I can guarantee if you can walk and chew bubble gum, you more than likely can pass the ASVAB. <laughs> so this part is very important. In your paperwork, the form 2807 TAC 2 Medical pre-screening is the most important document throughout your entire MEP process. Repeat this over and over to yourself. So what is this form exactly? I'm glad you asked. This form's purpose is to obtain medical data for determination of medical fitness for enlistment, induction, and appointment for members of the armed forces. With the implementation of the new military health system, new electronic health record, the MHS Genesis program holds multiple medical reporting systems to collect prior military history before joining the military. So this process is new because in previous instances, an applicant can go and say no to something that may have happened in the past and possibly pass the medical exam. But as of now with the MHS Genesis system, if something were to happen in their prior life or during the military, it will be polled and people will find out. So in the past, applicants were able to answer anything they wanted on the 2807. They can answer no to something that may have previously happened in the past. But with the new MHS Genesis program, if something were to happen in the past, then this system can poll previous ailments or conditions that happened prior to you joining the military and they can pull that from your record. So this is why it's an imperative that you be open and honest about any medical history that you had prior to joining the military because with this new system, they will find out more likely than not. So from the time of submission of your 2807 medical pre-screening form under the new MHS Genesis program, so with no issues, the turnaround time is usually 72 hours. With minor surgeries to include tonsillectomy, appendectomy, wisdom teeth remover, etc., the turnaround time could be 72 hours or no more than five working days. But when it comes to major surgeries, as of head trauma, ADHD, any medication that you have taken in the past, there is more in-depth information that needs to be gained so it can take upwards of 30 days. So once you have completed all of your documentation, it is now time to schedule you for MEPS. So if you have gotten this far and you have turned in all your documentation to your recruiter, then you are good to go. So it should be smooth sailing from here. But it is imperative that you do not say anything that you have already not conveyed or said to your recruiter and put on the medical pre-screening form 2807. I can guarantee if you say anything outside of what you've already conveyed on the 2807 or try to hide anything, once you get to MEPS and you express that to those medical professionals, they will be in the back like this. <laughs> Gotti! <laughs> Gotti! <laughs> So what happens from here when you have your MEPS date scheduled? I'm glad you asked. So you will be scheduled an overnight stay at one of the hotels that will be provided for by the military free of charge. So here's some things to consider when you're at the hotel. Ensure that you go to sleep at a decent time. Your morning will be early and your day will be long. It can go from 5 a.m. in the morning all the way to 5 p.m. in the afternoon. So keep that in mind. Drink lots of water to ensure that your lab results come back normal and that you can complete the urinalysis as well. And lastly, for breakfast in the morning, avoid high 
sodium and high sugar foods to ensure that your levels come back normal as well for the blood that is taken. So it's finally time to shine. It's finally time to go to MEPS. You wake up in the morning and it's time to get on the bus. What do you do? You have a ton of emotions running through your mind, but that's okay. This is the perfect time to conquer your emotions. So this is what to expect when you get to MEPS. Your process will include a full physical similar to a sports physical, a urinalysis, which all the water you have drinking before should help, right? A hearing test, eye exam, depth perception, blood pressure, color blindness, a duck walk test, which you should YouTube before actually going to MEPS. And they will ask you a series of questions that you have seen before that reference your 2807. So it's incumbent upon you to answer the same questions as you did before. So after you have completed the physical portion of the MEPS process, then it will be time to meet with a classifier. But here, the classifier will tell you what jobs you qualify for based off your ASVAB score. But what people don't also know is, based off your physical, that will also determine what jobs you qualify for. So if you didn't do so well in the depth perception or color blindness test, this may disqualify you from some jobs. So you can reference my video for joining the military to get more in-depth information on what to do when you want to pick a job and what's the most important things. I hope this video helps you on your journey and possibly calm some of your nerves. Make sure you do thorough research because this will be one of the most important decisions that you will ever make in your life. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe for more hacks. And as always, stay tuned for some more military hacks.